lived up in the hills, in that part of Arkansas. Old man McHenry was a mean old sort. He was a mean, stingy fellow. Didn't like anybody coming up, trying to get anything from him. Didn't like anybody even coming up onto his land. He didn't like anybody coming about. If you came up the road towards old man McHenry's place, if you came around the corner, there he'd be sitting on the rocking chair on the front porch of his cabin. He'd be rocking back and forth, and he'd be a common, and he'd fix you. It is one good eye. old man McHenry had only one eye. He'd lost the other in a knife fight years before. And so his remaining eye had grown big and pale. And if he'd come, he'd fix you with that stare. Never turning, never busy. Just rocking and staring until so you decided you didn't really need to talk to old man again. You didn't really need to go on the road past his place because there are other roads you could walk on. And you turn and you get out. And that's just the way old man McKenna was like. Old man McHenry finally died and was buried near his cabin, and still folks wouldn't go near him. They said old man McHenry was so mean and stinky. Even when he was dead, he didn't want anybody coming near his place. They said if you went up near old man McHenry's place late at night, when it was dark, you'd see it. You'd see that one pale eye gleaming in the dark as he fixed you. Stared and stared. You got out. Everybody knew it, so nobody go near old man Anderson. Now Jim Anderson knew the stories too. He never really thought much about them, and he wasn't thinking about them that night. It was about this time of year, the autumn was coming in, and Jim had been out hunting. He had been having a good day of it, but that had taken him farther from home than he planned to go. And as dark was falling, he looked around and realized there was no way he was getting back home. Not tonight. He'd have to sleep out. And normally that wasn't a problem, because he always carried a blanket and some extra food just in case. But it was a stormy night. It had been raining off and on all day. The ground was wet. There was rain starting to fall again. It was not a good night to sleep. But looking around at the hills all around him, he realized... But old man McHenry's place was just the other side of that ridge. Now, like I say, he knew the story. He didn't pay him no mind. He wasn't afraid of no ghosts. What did old man McHenry do in the cabin anyway? Well, Jim decided he'd go and help himself. So he headed up over the ridge, came down the road, and just as it was getting dark, came up onto the front porch, and as he set foot on the porch, he looked over to that rock. And just then, probably because I got the wind blew, that rocking chair started to rock. Back and forth. Just like when old man McHenry was sitting. And Jim just kind of looked and smiled at him. Uh -huh. And he went into the cabin. But the front room of that cabin was just like it had been when old man McHenry had lived there. Said nobody dared touch his stuff, even though he'd been dead all these years. So the table, bench. There was still firewood piled over by the fireplace. Jim went and he made himself a fire and he cooked his dinner. Sat there at old man McHenry's table and ate it off old man McHenry's one plate. And he left the, the dirty plate there and went around to the back room. And sure enough, old man McHenry's bed was still there. Bed frame, mattress. Had a mattress held up by ropes underneath so he tested it to see if those ropes were okay. And sure enough, they were and the mattress was he had to get the dust off of it. And then he lay himself down on that bed. He took that, that blanket of his and unrolled it over himself and he lay there. This was fine. Good place to spend. He looked out the window to one side. He could see the storm blowing by, the clouds, and the rain. But I'm glad I'm inside. And he lay there starting to drift off to sleep, but you know, as he was drifting off to sleep, 
that's when those stories started to go through his mind. The stories about old man McHenry coming in the night. So Jim made sure that his rifle was right next to the bed where he could reach it. And it was loaded. Just in case. Oh. He drifted off the street. Well, a few hours later, he woke up. He rolled over in his sleep, so when he opened his eyes, he was looking out that window, and he could see the storm was blowing by. The clouds were gone, and there was a full moon up there now, shining in nice and bright. And Jim thought, all right, it's going to be good hunting tomorrow, that's good. And he went to roll over onto his other side, but as he did, his eyes traveled down by the foot of the bed. And that's when he saw it. That's when he saw that one eye. Pale and gleaming in the dark at the foot of the bed. Old Man McHenry had found him. Old Man McHenry sitting there at the foot of the bed, fixing him with that eye and staring. And Jim just froze. He's too scared to move. He lay there for a long time. And old man McHenry sat there all the while, fixing him with that one pale eye, never turning, never blinking. Well, you can only be scared for so long, and it started to wear off, and Jim started to get a little bit ticked off. Who was old man McHenry just telling him not to sleep in the bed? It's not like old man McHenry needed the bed anymore. Maybe it was time somebody taught this ghost a lesson. Maybe Jim was the one to do it. He started moving real slow so as not to disturb that ghost. He went slow till he could reach out and grab his rifle. And then bring it back over. Turn it around. Fixed it against his shoulder and he raised his head just enough so that he could look through the rifle shot. Fix the rifle right on that one eye, gleaming in the dark. With careful aim, squeeze the trigger. There was a there was a shot and a scream. See, well, Jim had been sleeping. You know, he'd been hitching that blanket up around him the way you do, particularly when you're cold. Right. And he hit that blanket up until his foot was stuck out the bottom, and the moonlight shining in through that window had been reflected off the tunic of his big tunic. And that's where Jim had sighted his rifle on. And Jim Anderson had just shot his own big toe right off. And that's the story.